Hey, I'm Matt McKenzie, and I'm back with you today to see about installing Azure Backup. Um, so first things first, we're going to go to portal.azure.com, log in with our Microsoft account. Um, next we'll go in and create, well I guess first things first, if you go to subscriptions, make sure you've got a subscription in place. Uh, I've got a pay-as-you-go account, um, so I just have that as my subscription. You'll create a resource group next to put everything in. So if we go to resource groups, um, I went ahead and created an Azure backup test. And it is in US East, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so it's there. And then once you're there, you get a, the recovery vault. And then you go to backup. And we're doing an on-premise server, so it's going to be uh, a little bit different than having the server actually in Azure. So we're going to do on-premise, and we're just going to do files and folders and system state. This would be, you know, hey, I don't have a SQL, I don't have VMs, I don't have SharePoint or Exchange. And so uh, we're going to do just file folders, system state, so a real basic backup uh, so we'll do prepare infrastructure and we'll download the agent and the agent is the Mars agent installer um, so once we've downloaded it we'll download the recovery vault credentials because we'll need that in the next step so let's go ahead and open up the Mars agent it's going to install all the dependencies Uh, your scratch location, if you end up having a, a ton of files, you might end up uh, setting a, one of the larger disks to be your scratch lo uh, cache location um, because it's going to need at least 5% for the backup data. Um, so we'll go ahead and do next. Um, we don't have a proxy, so we'll do next again. We do want it to keep up to date with Windows. And click install. And it's going to install the dependencies real quick. Okay, and it finished up. And we'll go ahead and do proceed to registration. And this is where it'll ask for your vault credentials. So those do expire after two days. So pretty much download them if you're ready to go ahead and set it up. Um, and so once we've got uh, it connected with our Azure instance, um, now it's going to ask for a recovery passphrase. Basically, this is what, how it's going to be encrypted. Um, so you have to do 16 characters minimum. Um, you can always generate your own. You can always make your own. I would probably advise to make your own. That way, hopefully, it's easier to remember. Um, for at least our lab, we're going to save it on the desktop for the page, but they also recommend using the Azure Key Vault to store your secret uh, for the passphrase as well, which is a good idea. External location is the recommended deal. So usually I would copy this off uh, to some other location because um, if I had a full server failure I would use this to access it from another server. Alright and here's the warning it says about the passphrase. Uh, you know, hey, you're storing it locally. If your server fails, you can't actually get a biggest issue ransomware attacks. So we'll go ahead and continue. And then it's going to register the server. All right, and now it shows where it's stored everything. Obviously, the warning about the local 
and to store it in the Azure Key Vault. So we'll go ahead and do launch Microsoft Azure Recovery Agent. Okay, and uh, a few things you can do in here. Uh, one thing you can do, uh, you can always change your passphrase, update where you want to save the uh, passphrase save. You can uh, go in and set up your proxy if you end up getting behind a proxy. You probably want to set up throttling if you have limited bandwidth uh, for, like, say, during the workday, you know, you don't want to load running, uh, you know, say if you only got 20 megs, you don't want it running over 10 megs during the day so that people aren't like, hey, why is my internet so slow? So you can do that under change properties. Um, then to set up your backup, you'll get a schedule backup. And we'll go ahead and choose the items we want to backup. We want to back up the system state. Um, and we back up the C drive. I don't really want to do everything. Um, but we'll go in here and we'll say, hey, you know, I know I've got, this is a DC, so we need to go ahead and back up. What's this fall for one? Give it a second. Just trying to enumerate that to some 32 folder. There we go. Um, so yeah, here we'll scroll down real quick, see if we can get that. I want the sysfall folder, obviously. Uh, very hard to recreate. Um, and then we'll go back up and uh, we don't have DHCP, but if we did, we'd want to back it up. Um, your ND, uh, NTDS folder is pretty important and uh, I don't think that there was anything else eh, can't hurt to back up DNS that's always a good thing um, sure we'll just stick with those those for now you can always add more later um, so we'll go ahead and click next and then we'll say, hey, I wanna, I wanna back up every day at, you know, maybe I wanna back up at midnight uh, every day for the system state. Sure. And then you can set your retention policy to match. Hey, what are you kind of looking for for recovery points? How many, how many recovery points do you want? Do you want, you know, basically 68? recovery points. No, we don't. We probably want like five. Um, you know, it's not that often I have to worry about it. Looks like the minimum is going to be seven. Um, and we want it to run every day at 12 a.m. Oh, wait. Uh, this is file and folder. So yeah, we'd choose uh, probably end up doing this one earlier. We'd say, hey, I want to do this one at 6 p.m. Uh, you can set it to back up multiple times a day, up to three times um, in a day, which, you know, if, uh, if that's what your business needs, then hey, just remember you're going to have more recovery points. So, so we'll go in, you can actually set years as well, so if you had some archiving requirements, you could do that. We're going to set it for seven days as well, if it will let us. Yeah, so uh, we're going to transfer it over the network. We don't have um, a Microsoft Azure data box or using our own desk to like ship it out um, to, you know, like seed your backup. Say if you've got, you know, tons and tons of data, it would take forever to do the initial backup. So uh, we don't own this server per se. So we're just going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to transfer it over the network. Right now it shows, hey, system state, 12 a.m. every day. Uh, weekly, once a week. Finish. Just gonna go ahead and create these two jobs. Okay, so it ended up creating the 
two jobs. And now we'll go ahead and go to backup now. We'll say, hey, I want to backup the files and folders. It'll say, hey, it's going to retain this copy for a month. And we'll go ahead and say backup. And you can watch the progress. It'll show a job over here. While we're waiting, we'll pop back over to Azure and go back to our Azure backup to our recovery vault. And we're going to go down to backup alerts. And in here, if you go to configure notifications, you can turn it on. Put in your email, you know, for uh, what you call it, for getting alerts. You won't get any for um, the successful backups, but you'll get all for the warnings, cautions, just informational. Um, so this is where you'd go to do it. You'd save it. You can have multiple people uh, in it. Um, I don't know if they actually gave a true limit. Typically, I've only put like three or four people in here. Um, so uh, you could set up a distribution group, put it in here too. Um, and once you save that, then they'll get updates every time it backs up uh, and if it has an error. And so we'll go ahead and discard it because we don't care about notifications on here. This job uh, finished. And so we were successful there. And uh, you can always go back and look at a job to see the status. If it's got a a gray uh, icon instead, it could mean it's in the middle of doing that job. We can try it out here on System State. And so there, will put a little uh, information icon. So say if you did have this closed, and you're like, hey, you know, what's it doing right now? Or I want to cancel that job. You just click on your job, double click it. You can cancel the job. You can just monitor what it's doing. Uh, it just kind of gives you a, a checkup. Um, you can't actually check the status of the backup while it's running in Azure. Um, just basically get alerts. Um, you can see, however, uh, the backup jobs. Um, this one obviously hasn't finished, so it hasn't synced up yet. Um, but ultimately, it'll show the jobs in the backup jobs uh, tab once it's done checking in. Um, and so uh, that is somewhat beneficial is you can always go back and check on the Azure portal instead of logging in. Say if you had like 20, 30 servers, you could just log into the Azure portal and see. So, um, but that's it for, uh, for backing up with um, Azure Backup uh, on-premise. Thanks for watching.